There is a little gem just a couple of miles from my house that is almost a thousand years old. A small church surrounded by an attractive, peaceful churchyard and old cemetery. Permanently adorned with beautiful flowers and surrounded by old, tall, elegant trees. A parkland of ethereal loveliness. Walking among the graveyard, I can appreciate why so many people have chosen this final resting place. This lovely church was commissioned around the year 1080 by William de Varenne, son-in-law of William the Conqueror, who had been granted vast land holdings for his part in the Norman invasion. Originally dedicated to St. John Evangelist, the church was later dedicated to All Hallows or All Saints. On entering the church from the porch, on the left corner is the font where people were christened. For many centuries the font was sealed in by a lockable lid to prevent evil people from stealing the holy water. This is the ancient basin for holy water. Next to a scratch dial used to set the service time. Note the originality of different styles of arcades and architecture. 12th century round normal arches on the left and more pointed 14th century Gothic arches on the right, built to increase the church size. Also the roof was raised in the 15th century, as shown by the change of stonework. This created space to install a tier of beautiful windows attributed to Ulisse de Matteis, a 19th century renowned glacier from Florence. De Matteis had developed his clever technique in joining pieces of glass of various colors together with lead to create a medieval image. Two different keys were needed to open the 16th century parish chest used to keep valuable documents. The Italian influence in All Hallows is also shown in the elaborate, beautiful wood carvings made by Carlo Scarcelli. The ancient carvings of an angel holding a Knight's Templar shield are also interesting historical details. The church was the traditional burial place of the Dukes of Leeds from the Osborne family. The tomb of the first duke is huge and has a highly polished black marble top and beneath the chapel several dukes, duchesses and other family members are buried. No wonder that the Osborne family members had chosen this little gem in Heart Hill as final resting place.
Climbing to the tower is a bit of a squeeze and also a thrilling experience. This is where enthusiastic bell ringers regularly wake up the village. By squeezing further, it's possible to reach the top of the tower to enjoy excellent panoramic views. Here, the Union flag is changed periodically. This year is special, as also All Hallows commemorates the end of the First World War a hundred years ago, with a service that can generate special emotions. Snowden, Morris Turnbull, and William Vergette.